What is up down and sideways, you lovely individuals? It is another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. We're going back in the time machine today, but it's not very far. It's just 2022 to relive what I'm going to call the most iconic. And I, I don't see how you ever top the miracle run from start to finish that we got out of DRX from 2022. It's been long enough that I'm ready to go revisit it again. The miracle run of all miracle runs, DRX 2022 World Champions. What a journey. This is going to be such a fun little trip, as you said, back in time to revisit that run and kind of the lead up to this run that happens at the World Championship, culminating in this incredible run for DRX. Really think that this was one of the special and probably one of the most iconic world championship type of moments and run that we have ever seen in league of legends we got to start before they've even qualified for worlds lck summer split when every player analyst commentator viewer was doubting this nine and nine squad that went into playoffs they match up in the first round against live sandbox remember this is the prince era live sandbox they ultimately fall three to one in that first round and play the longest game of the split at 51 minutes by the way but they get bumped into that regional gauntlet and then from there after seeing one best of five from them nobody was even talking about them like they were part of this gauntlet Let's set up the table a little bit to understand what we're dealing with at this point for DRX. We had all summer long, all the attention, all the hype is about Gen G on a record breaking path to their LCK championship. You're overlooking anything like DRX. You're looking at the LCK. You're trying to judge what are their chances? Who's the best pick? Of course, you're talking about Gen G. You've got T1 in that conversation. And at this point in the gauntlet run for DRX, it's not even Piosik. It's Juhan that's stepping in and taking charge for the team. And I think that this is going to be an important part to talk about, about why DRX finally comes together and powers up and levels up at the World Championship. A lot of, large part of that is going to be that dynamic between Juhan and the team, as well as Juhan and Piosik, who eventually will, of course, take over that starting role. And as they get demoted, into the gauntlet. Obviously, they're at the bottom of it. You had Lid Sandbox and Dom One in that winner's of final. Dom One eventually clinches that third seed. And again, KT, Dom One, Lid Sandbox, it's which of those two teams are going to Worlds. No one was even talking about DRX. We were already previewing KT and whoever wins Dom One, Lid Sandbox before DRX even stepped on the rift. And they said, how dare you disrespect this us? And this is the DRX that we didn't even see these glimpses, these signs that someone like Zeka or Kingen could pop off the way that they're going to throughout this run. It was all about depth and figure some stuff out around him. And Piosik, you knew, had this talent, but it was inconsistent throughout the year. That's where you ended up with the Juhan timing during this uh, gauntlet, which you better believe is incredibly crucial to how they figure themselves out to power up for Worlds. And by the way, any of these wins, the first guy running out and hugging Juhan is Piosik. You want to talk about the ultimate teammate to have on a squad. Piosik is that guy. So many guys would be pouty or, oh, you know, lost my starting spot. Not Piosik whatsoever. He's happy as a clam. First match against KT. This is KT where Vikla is on the squad, where people were expecting them to be that fourth seed. And it's... A game five that goes the way of DRX. It's back to back game fives against KT and then Live Sandbox. And by the way, that fifth game against Live Sandbox, the rematch from the squad that eliminated them in playoffs is an absolute stomp. 23 kills to three in the favor of DRX. And then that moment, the game that qualifies them for Worlds, all of a sudden you say, okay, maybe there's a little something to this DRX squad. That's the first sign. I think that a couple people started to notice about DRX, about them having this opportunity to, you know what? They're going to make a lot of upsets happen because people are going to undervalue, underestimate what they are capable of. Seeing them go through this journey in the gauntlet and capitalize it with that stomp against the squad that sent them down to here in the first place, 
That is the type of edge that we see develop for this DRX team to become the eventual world champion. And listen, this is where the casualties start mounting because back-to-back -back series, Vikla and Prince destroyed by DRX their last series in the LCK before they go to NA. See you later. Pack your bags. It's the DRX show throughout this series in the gauntlet. And it is, again, one of these ones where at the very beginning of the gauntlet, maybe, you know, you still had these intentions watching it going, yeah, I still want to see who's going to be that fourth seed. You had no hope for them. You thought, okay, maybe they're going to get there. Dust up a couple of Western teams, LCS, LEC, whatever, eventually meet their match with a better LCK team or one of these threats from the LPL. Oh boy, I can't wait to dive into what that story tells for us with DRX. I mean, it was already a miracle run through Gauntlet to even qualify as that fourth seed heading to the World Championship. And you could see how elated the boys on DRX were just to be representing at that World Championship, obviously as the four seed had to go through that play-in stage. And immediately they get drawn into a group with RNG. I think consensus was DRX should get out of this group. Absolutely. But RNG should be the first seed. And they were the first ones to match up. And DRX said, even after that gauntlet run, you still disrespecting us. And this is to paint the picture even better. This is MSI champions RNG. Yes. A roster change does happen after uh, MSI. Important to kind of note that one for RNG, but this is still that team that did capture that international championship, still did show that type of threat on the international stage right out of the gates in these play-ins. DRX is up to play. They're up to the task, taking the challenge and taking the game away from RNG. I think there is something else to mention with this one, looking at the champion selection. A little bit questionable looking down at Gala on the side of RNG. I think that Nyla pick didn't quite fit in with everything else at the time. Absolutely capitalized by DRX. And this is, you know, we just, Juhan was so important in that gauntlet run for them, but Piosik is the guy who started almost all of the games at Worlds. It was two Maokai games for Juhan in the playing stage and then a single Lee Sin game in that main stage, despite getting benched. Whether it was through scrims or just working with the team, Piosik very much asserted back that starting jungler role and, well, he had a hell of a run at the World Championship. So whatever mental reset he had, it absolutely worked. It was major because it was right out of the gates that they roll with Piosik for this World Championship. And that does raise immediate questions from a lot of people that had saw the run through the gauntlet and how important and what difference there was for the team with Juhan in the in the lineup and what they were able to get done. Having Piosik step in, raise those questions, brought in the questions about inconsistency, whether that performance was going to be at that level that you needed to be at the very baseline to be able to survive at a world championship type of event. It absolutely was. And over the course of this playing stage before the group stage, the question was answered without a doubt that this is your best option as DRX to be rolling with Piosik as one of these options, one of these threats in the jungle for your team. But okay. A close game against RNG, needed a come from behind win against the Mad Lions. It's a 5 0 perfect playing stage, but it's just playing. You know, we've seen squads like Hanwha Life in the past get through and then kind of just be there, not be actual threats. We go to the group stage and DRX, even in a group, they got Rogue, Top Esports. It wasn't uncommon to be saying, I could see DRX being on the outside looking in as that third seed because this is the rogue team that won the entire LEC summer split and the top esports that people were very high on. So it wasn't a rare thing to say DRX might not get out of groups. I mean, e even after the first week of the play in stage, you might have been, you definitely weren't crazy, but you absolutely had a lot of people thinking that DRX is that third team looking in. They are worth on the outside compared to the other two in their group, the way they were running, you know, especially with Rogue really showing you know and I, compared to this year where i think a lot of the number one seeds didn't quite show up and thrash down throw it down the way a number one seed that type of power you know and respect that we look at it rogue did for that first week of this world championship and yes drx looking in but you better believe barrel and the boys got a couple of things cooked up for week two 
Yeah, week two of that group stage is where you see the evolution of DRX. Obviously, split games with top esports, split games with Rogue, but when the tiebreaker comes around, that's when they really show up. We start to see this little sneaky Aatrox pick for King and start to become a menace, which, spoiler, the guy's got a world skin on it, so, you know. <laughs> And arguably the drippiest of world skins out That's there for that Aatrox. So drippy that even the guy that he beat to get it is using that skin. That's how good it is. Talking a little sidetrack on that one. It really was this little glimpse in that uh, tie-breaking game of that Aatrox of what King could do, what this team could look like, having that additional carry threat on the roster for DRX. It really also showed you, yes, after that first week, Absolutely, Rogue looking like that number one seed, coming a little bit back down to earth and trying to understand the value of where it was, whether it was DRX, yes, they are that true LCK, true Korean team, stepping up and dismantling a Western squad, or if it was somewhere in between. I think the answer is closer to somewhere in between. Still not necessarily the best answer for Rogue. Well, it's the classic week two Western team. You know, that's just what happens at the World Championship. But uh Clinching that first seed, I think then we everyone was kind of saying, this this is not the same DRX. Where was this in the summer split for the LCK for two and a half plus months? You never saw any signs of them reaching a level where we'd be talking about them as a first seed, top eight at Worlds. And that's the craziest thing. You think back to this whole year for DRX, there were moments that it warmed up, that there looked like this was gonna be a team that could contend, could threaten at this type of level, this type of stage of the year. But it never lasted long enough. It was always dismantled by one of the better teams in the LCK, taken down and then taken a little bit of a road to get back up and then inconsistent against the lower mid tier. This it was the type of time where you started to finally see, oh man, it might all come together for this DRX team. And if it does in these best of series that are ahead of them, absolutely has that slim chance of being the miracle run. And that knockout round top eight is where the magic truly started to happen because so many times in years past, we talk about finalists or even world champions. Well, they kind of had an easy draw, easy bracket to get through. This was about as difficult a run as DRX could possibly have, starting with the defending world champions who come out as the second seed. Not only are the de defending world champs, you got uh, Deft going against some former teammates, a former team, Scout and Mako on this squad. And this is a series where you have that second game where the inhib respawns and denies Deft a win for DRX to fall down 0-2 in this series. The most incredible, improbable, painful moment in League of Legends history. Right there, one step away, evening the series up. It's all gonna be bueno. We're all good to go here in this series. Oh, the inhib has respawned. Oh, we lose the game. Oh my lord, you are down 0-2. This is instantly the opportunity to check yourself. This is one where you could doubt yourself on what you are capable of but no DRX, they go back, they talk it through, they double down on who they are. They say, set up my man, Zeka, set up my man, Kingen. We are not going out quietly tonight. And yes, they push it to that Silver Scrapes. And in Silver Scrapes, I think is where we get the big moment that starts it all, this whole run for Zeka and how he really levels up and takes over as one of these LCK mid lane monsters. Well, this is when his legend is truly starting to be written as you force that game five. And this is the Silas performance where he solo scout. Solo kills him, I think it's what, four times? He's popping off against the defending World Finals MVP in Scout. He has this incredible Silas performance that's highlighted by a quadra kill to close things out. And then you start saying, okay, there's something magical around this DRX team to come back from 0-2 for the reverse sweep and to have Zekka styling on Scout like this? What's going on? I, I'm telling you, looking back at these highlights, revisiting this type of run, I'm kind of upset that he didn't roll with the Silas World Championship skin. We got, uh, you got too much influence from Barrel coming through, telling him to pick the Akali skin, get some nice cash. This really is that he's that type of guy moment coming through from Zeka, stepping up and delivering in this fashion. 
the dominance that came through that individual effort in these solo bolos and capturing it on world championship scout that absolutely set forth and really ignited the drx fans and then the full anime main character plot armor comes online as they go to the next round against gen g the historic summer split champions and zeka styles on scout in those quarterfinals but now he's going up against chovy who is the consensus best mid laner in the world at the time and the guy deft was following from drx to hanwa life and then now he's back to drx former teammate the saga continues and what does Zeka do? Not only holds up to the lane kingdom god Chobi, but styles on him in four straight games. And, and this is where it gets to that absolute nutty territory because you could somehow find a way to understand and go, wow, what a power up from Zeka really stepping up in that series against EDG, against Scout on the other side. How do you ever put him up to the levels of Chobi, someone that has dominated the Korean scene the last couple of years to a level that we have never seen. And again, we're talking about a region with the unkillable Demon King setting that standard in the mid lane at the top of competition. Zeka steps on through in this matchup. And yes, you're right. In lane, out of lane, he had the answers for Chovy. I've arguably never seen someone be able to be that toe to toe, that ahead of Chovy throughout the season. And it, it wasn't even just Chovy. We were talking about Ruler as the best player in the world at the tournament coming into this, always highlighting this dude's immaculate positioning. Game in, game out. Zek is finding picks on this guy who was unkillable throughout the entire LCK summer split. In a single series, he simultaneously beats up on Chovy in lane and picks off Ruler in team fight after team fight. And it's only gotten more crazy to think that this actually happened the way that things continue for ruler and the way that he continues to show that he is at that very tippity top of the level of skill that we've got in this game Zeka what goes sent on. him to the lpl after this oh no say it ain't so my god drx what an incredible game in this one the way that they played this series against gen g it really was one of these ones where it's so easy to take the look at this one and step away going you know what gen g they didn't step up to the level of their competition they you know extinguished at the very end of this historic run disappointment failure the way that you stepped out of this one was all about drx was all about zeka taking it to chovy taking it to the rest of the squad and finding a way to be that team that best gen g and says uh-uh we've got a date at the world finals it truly feels like this is a script ripped off from the series finale of Pokemon or something where you have DRX and Deft as your main character all these years struggling trying to get to that league championship beating former teammates and former teams along the way before it culminates going up against the ultimate rival the guy you went to high school with and said there's this other good guy in my class that is pretty good at League of Legends I want to be better than him it shouldn't be too hard right he shouldn't end up being the greatest player of all time in the game Oh, whoopsie. Yeah, he did. Mr. Faker and Deft meeting in the finals. This is one of the very, very rare and limited occasions that we have ever hyped up something, you know, ourselves, the riot promotion, everything hyping up and building up this storyline between two players, two organizations, everything. Have it actually pay off and deliver more than expected throughout these finals even the performances of these two specific players on the line love it let's dive into this incredible finals the teaser videos for all the knockout rounds that featured drx are some of the best you'll ever see because riot didn't even have to do anything all you have to do is let these guys talk and then let people think of what the actual storyline is and you're like this this is insane i can't believe this is real and we're, we're talking again, you're going back to a couple of these interviews that we have seen. And of course, this is the journey of Piosik running through every imitation of the champions that he's playing. He's going through in these post games. You have Deft crying, talking about all these things, all the hardship that he went through, all the failures, all the failed runs. And this is the one that's working out for him and to keep on pushing for your dreams. My man's dreaming all the way to the world finals against the high school rival, Mr. Faker. 
and we step out onto the rift and unfortunate for drx it's a quick quick rude awakening to this dream run that it had been that this finals is absolutely going to be at a different level and you want to talk about how special this run for drx is people faker his first time back in the finals since 2017 everyone is rooting for him to get back to that absolute summit but you still had people saying i love faker so happy to see him here but i gotta root for deft it was everyone loves faker but deft this is the one time you feel like there's someone that people were rooting for ahead of faker it absolutely was and a lot of people it wasn't just about that factor about death a lot of people thought this might be it this is the final dance this could be the last run if he gets this no way he's coming back type of situation pranked this us all was... with that one didn't he Damn. absolutely <laughs> but hey i'm always a fan of seeing that going through but it is one of these incredible moments where it does build up to that and it is the most popular the most iconic player in league of legends and you're still cheering and rooting for the best for drx as i said game one not the best picture for drx game two also probably not the best picture for drx and it's again just a, a testament another story for them going down 2-1 people doubting them and then the atrox king in fully comes online as he dominated that fourth game it was only fitting that we were going to get silver scrapes in this series and it was only fitting that you got an absolute banger of a fifth game from the Guma Yushi Baron Steel on Barris, which he already we already had a couple Baron Steels in this series up to that point, to an incredibly back and forth that eventually culminates in this near back door from T1. But unluckily for them, Barrow was six steps ahead of them as always. Oh man, 6D chest coming through from the general himself, Mr. Barrow, down in that bottom lane. Curious arch nemesis come and clutch in game five. This really has been the story. This whole series, what happened? Having King and step up to get to this type of point and then betting on that pick in T1, betting against King and being able to perform and dominate on that type of level with the champion, figuring we got to have some type of counter, something to keep this contained. They didn't. They didn't have any answer for that Aatrox. And yes, when it came down to the clutch moments, the only thing left for T1 was to try that backdoor base race. But uh, -uh Mr. Barrel is snuffing it out. He's communicating that one about 30, 40 seconds before it is actuated by T T uh, T1 to the rest of his teammates. ERX, world champions, standing tall. And again, as soon as this knockout round started, as soon as that EDG series, they were able to come back and win. It truly felt like the universe was influencing this run by DRX. Obviously, pure elation from the entire lineup. All these guys winning their first world championship. Guys who have been doubted for years. Guys who have struggled on so many different teams hyped up like Deft that never could get it done. They get it done in 2023. And again, you want to highlight Piosik, how great a guy this is. Kyria is heartbroken after this series. And when Piosik goes to shake hands with his former teammate, it's a massive hug telling him, it's all good, man. You're still amazing. This really is that full team effort and team family of DRX coming through for the championship. Relive it and enjoy it because the magical run of DRX 2022, probably something we will never see again. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.